last presentation for <laughs> of um, you know uh, this uh, the conference. This conference uh, will be from Dr. Gan Liang Ming. Um, currently, he's the deputy director of the Center of Instructional Resources and E-Learning, um, University Malaysia Pahang. So. He's almost ready. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Gan Li Ming. Gan. Uh, while waiting for the, the, the presentation to be set up, um, may I remind everyone one thing that uh, please don't forget to pick up your certificate of a participant at the registration desk. And um, all the photos that you have posted on Facebook, uh, that would be nice if you will do the hashtag of um, IEC uh, TCUIEC or TCUIEC 2018. So we have the collection of photos sharing among us. Okay, good afternoon to all. Uh, thanks for inviting and uh, welcome. Although I'm still the, finally, until my turn, seeing a, a lot of the presenter before me. Uh, I would like to do a little bit of an introduction about myself. My name is uh, Gan Leong Ming. Uh, my partner is actually not here today, Dr. Aza. I'm currently, I'm holding the position as a deputy director for the Center of Instructional Resource and E-Learning for University of Malaysia Pahang. It's a one of the public universities in Malaysia. Okay? So today, the menu of my presentation is actually will be related to MOOC and Global Classroom. I put it into something, a menu, okay? So first of all, we will have some uh, starter about the UMP Journal of MOOC because we are talking about MOOC. Secondly, we are talking about the Global Sentiments uh, Survey. It's actually not a survey done by me. I get it from someone and I wish I attend his uh, speech, which I think is actually very relevant to the things that we're doing. Third is actually drawback in the development and the engagement, not talking about everyone. It's actually it's specifically for my own university. What the things that we face a problem the constraint about the MOOCs program in my own university, in the own perspective. 
After that, I'm going to tell you what is called Global Classroom and what is the benefit to the educators and the student learn to coordinate and assemble of the things that we done to you. So after that, we are talking about student feedback. What is the student perception on we doing this? Finally, it's actually is a little bit of the our networking that we already built up since uh, 2016 until 2018. Uh, we just very new about this program. Okay, so UMP mode same as everyone. We are developing our mode, and the journey of our mode started in 2015 by three courses. The three courses over here. One of it is actually mine. It's actually on the EEV hybrid system. So anyone here know about what is called EEV? It's about car engineering based. So energy efficiency vehicle. Do you know hybrid? Hybrid car. Yes. Do you know what is the construction of the hybrid engine? Uh, how about, what do you mean by the, uh, the, the battery? The battery of the hybrid car? Is it danger? Not really. Okay, so you have a battery cell, for example, battery cell is 9 volt. You always put it into your pocket. Am I right? The battery cell for one unit of the battery slot for a hybrid car is 7 volt. It's lesser than the one that you have in your pocket. Okay, so if you want to know more, please join me. And in uh, 2016, our university getting the bigger dreams. <laughs> okay, each of the faculties and the uh, center, they need to be, uh, build their own one mode. So 10 of them survived nine. After that, we started in 2017, we uh, give opportunity, started to gain a lot of attention from the faculty members. They would like to try to develop and then we receive about 20 plus of the uh, new MOOC titles and Survivor Game 7. So in 2018, uh, the Survivor Game is continued. <laughs> so the, the one that to apply to, get, uh, to develop the new MOOCs is getting reducing and the number of the MOOCs that we're producing also getting reducing. Okay. The number of the students that we have since 2015 uh, until uh, 2018, this is the latest uh, data that we have. Total, we have about 8,679 students enrolled to UMP mode, and mostly we serve to the local and the UMP student, our local student. So roughly about 9% of it is actually come from the international student. The demography of the student is roughly come from about 50 plus uh, country over here. Some of them is come from the Asians, some of them come from the continent of the Europe, Africa, America, Australia, and the uh, Oceania. So roughly like this. Okay, this is a global sentiment uh, survey done by Donald Taylor. So he's a quite an expert in the e-learning, so he's a reference in UK. He putting some uh, technology about learning. Okay, ask people to fill up. Which do you think is actually is the most relevant? Which one do you, do you like it? Okay, some of the multiple choice. You can choose maximum up to three. Since 2015, he's doing this survey. And uh, uh, people or the, bro it's a globally, most of people that give a survey on it, it's actually started by a small number and then getting increasing. So it's actually the continent, uh, including the people come from Europe, uh, America, Australia, India, Asia, all they have some of it. This is the mode. <coughs> okay, from the starting is uh, in 2015, stated number nine, go to 2016, number 14, then continuously to, to 2007 and 2018, is number 16. Last. Okay. I make a comparison to the MOOCs that we have in my own university. Uh, starting, we are very uh, adventuring. We have our three MOOCs to be developed. After that, we're getting a more, nine, and then put it decreasing seven, and then we, my university are facing some problem. Okay, the stu it sounds like we develop a MOOC, and then the, um, the patience to operating the MOOC is not there. We have a, a lot of enrollment. Okay, I believe I don't need to lie anything. I have a very high value of enrollment, 8,000 plus, but the completion rate of the MOOC is less than 5% or lower. Some even, they just want the figure. Because MOOC, you're talking about number. So they just ask, 
all, all the students, please enroll. After enroll, the lecturer themselves, they have uh, no idea how to, do, how to use it, how to do some, some kind of online engagement. Okay? That's why he's making an ex, uh, explanation. He's asking, it should be widely popular because they are free or low cost, often delivered by the world's most prestigious uh, academic institution. Why? It's still new to the bottom of the tables. Any answer from the floor? It's not my result, okay? I just copy whatever he said. Any idea? Okay, so this is some answer from him. When something looks like a good idea in principle, but it's too complex or time-consuming to put into practice, there is only one direction of travel, downward. Remember the first speaker, the, uh, the keynote speaker from Malaysia for this, to, uh, this morning? He mentioned that, uh, she mentioned one thing, she took MOOCs, okay? She teach at the beginning. After that, she took a MOOC, okay? The MOOC is actually have to, she tell herself, she need to go through about 14 weeks of the MOOCs. And up two weeks, she quit. What is the reason she give it? She, too much of video. Okay, so this is uh, what are we doing? We are producing a lot of, uh, it's either quality or non-quality video. It's actually, we have to depend on the student themselves, self-based. They learn it or not, we are not sure. Okay, in my own university, I'm facing two uh, conditions. Before the educators are able to develop MOOCs, they need to know how to apply instructional design for course development. The lecturers from my own university is uh, quite traditional before this. They only know that the graduate and then they know that their professor, the way they teach is actually the professor go into their class, putting on some side, OSP or projector. So teach for 50 minutes, one hour, some even three hours continuously. Okay, after that, they copy the same pattern. Okay, then this is the way my professor teach me. I teach the same thing. Okay, so now when we ask this kind of uh, lecturers to produce more, uh, they have no idea what is called instructional design. Because although we are called lecturers in my own university, but all of them is not the real educators. All of them graduate from engineering background. Okay, you're talking about what is called instructional strategy, instructional design, uh, AD model. They have no idea what is that. So you have to, before they, are, they can educate the student how to engage in online, we need to educate them how to do a Class, flipping up, trying to change from conventional into uh, interactive or technology-based. Second problem I'm facing, after the MOOC is online, educator must be able to perform online learning engagement between lecturers and students, which is not happen. It's uh, really happening in my own university. Uh, we are asking them, okay, so you have a MOOC course online. Now, please ask your student to enroll. They do it. After that, they are not really use it. They just go into the class, teach as normal, and then they just say, I have my slide, I have my video in the mode. You have free time, just go to have a look. So then the student is actually demotivated because what do you mean by online? You have the video, you have everything there, and then you just ask me to do it by myself, and I have no idea what should I do. And it's not contributing to anything, and uh, my lecturers also not using it. Okay, so that's why this is some problem. So now, we try to change the way that before uh, they are started to develop the MOOCs or for those who have the MOOCs in their, in their courses, we try to leverage the level. They are not advanced into the MOOCs level, drag it back to the most basic classroom-based learning. Okay? Because lecturer, by minimum, they still go into the classroom. Am I right? And they're still facing their student. So that's why we make a definition of a program called Global Classroom. So Global Classroom, contemporary teaching paradigm. Beyond the classroom boundary, okay, that as a student collaborate virtually while being mentored by inter international educators from partner institutions through the technology integrated collaborative online international learning. So make it easy. We have a classroom, try to make some synchronous classroom. 
by inviting some lecturers come from overseas to join us. Okay, today I have a class with my student over here. At the same time, I might have a few professors uh, waiting in online to teach my student. I have some another 100 of students come from different countries. They are ready to do some interaction or some collaborative work with my student. Right? If the professor in my university that started to do something like this one, do they need to develop a mock? No. Do they need to record a video? No. Do they need to prepare some online assessment things? Okay? Not really. They are not no need to, no need to do something like this one. They just make sure, make, uh, have to make sure that the student in their classroom have something to do. Do what? Collaborative work. Group discussion. Anything else? What we can do with the student in the class? Presentation, can we? We can write. So can you have a student to have a group presentation where it's come from two students from Malaysia and two students from Thailand at the same time into a group? Possible. How about project? Debate? Possible, right? We debate a topic about uh, MOOCs in Malaysia is better or MOOC in Thailand is better. It's a good debate. Am I right? So let them. Okay. <coughs> so anything that we are talking about is actually is a virtual face-to-face -face concept where we are talking about focus on the peer-to-peer -peer activities and plus with some of the distant assessment. So what kind of activity we are talking about? You can have a topic exchange, intercultural assignment, collaborative lecture, virtual forum, presentation, or international project, and etc. I have a condition like, for example, I have a mix one condition like I have a partner with Kansai University from Japan. I'm teaching purely engineering subject in energy efficient vehicle. And I ask, give my one assignment to my student. Can you tell me in Japan one of the uh, uh, having the latest technology in the EV or the hybrid, what, is, what kind of the uh, transportation normally they use? Energy talk, talk about EV. So some, for some of the students in uh, my partner from uh, Kansai University, they're talking about Asian study. They want to learn how Muslim wear, uh, pray five times a day. What's the reason behind? So I believe that these two questions is actually for our own students is a very difficult thing. The maximum we can only ask a guru. He is or she is Google or might be YouTube. Right? So now we exchange the topic. I give this assignment to Japan student. The Japan, uh, Japan topic give to Malaysia student. We on behalf of them do the assignment. Make the presentation. Okay? At the end, my student found out that it's actually in Japan. Uh, they never heard about uh, some of the student in Osaka. They never heard about a Nissan Leaf or EV car because they say that in Osaka, they are dominated by Mitsubishi, not a Nissan brand. I'm not sure it's correct or not. This is from them. So for those students, they now they understand why the Muslims have to pray five times a day because it's really the knowledge come from the uh, native. Okay? So we started to build the things into three levels. We call it as a basic GC, standard GC. Basic GC is actually very important, very touch and go level. Let the student, to, let the lecturer and the student to feel that the connection with the world. Okay, maybe have a one or two session, minimum three hours of uh, connection, or the or the engagement in the collaborative learning. So now our lecturer started to be ready onto the standard GC, which you have to spend the time that you have in your class about thirty percent, which minimum ten percent of the assessment with the partners. You can have the professor come from the other countries or other uh, institutions to give a quiz to the student or they can involve in the final exam preparations, one or two questions for the student. Yes, it's allowed because we don't have, need to change the teaching syllabus. We are not, uh, um, have to, how to say, make an identical course planning or course uh, benchmarking with our partner because we're only based on some topic level. Finally, if those who can handle it well, they can go for something we call as an advanced GC. Actually, it's a MOOC. So now, before they can really move into MOOC, we let them to feel that how is the online lecture or online learning can be happened. 
So we prepare our lecturers before we go to the MOOC. We tried before. So for those, uh, we started with MOOC actually. Okay, we give them the MOOCs. After they finish, the subject is just abandoned there for one or two years or one year. So then the students just are uh, getting increased and then no progress, no interaction, nothing happened. But when we're giving a program called Global Classroom, they start to accept and they start to improve the technology skill. So what are the benefit to the UNIC? So this is a part of the internalization on the campus. So for your information, UMP is actually a, quite a young teenager level. So not really, really being well known by anyone. We try to use this approach to let the other world know the existence of our university. Second is actually promoting our student mobility. This is very important. Because each of the universities are looking for the student for mobility to their country and same thing. We are looking for some stu our student go for another country or some other country go to our, our campus. So from this one, let the student to feel the virtual mobility, to feel the intercultural exchange. Third is actually is to expand our partnership. So currently, uh, we try, we quite moving quite slow. Until now, although after three years, we just get about 10 plus of the partner from different uh, countries. So next is actually promoting the MOOC. So before, now, in uh, my own university, when we're talking about the program, we have to, we give an option to the lecturers. For lecturers, you choose, you want to make a GC or you want to make a MOOC. Okay, almost 99% of it, they choose GC. Because they think that, I'm making a, DC, a GC, I don't need to build a course. I don't, make the, I don't need to make a record of the video, no need to do assessment. I just do everything conventionally, but using technology, connect our student with the world. But for more, I'm connecting my student with the technology, but not to the world. Are you agree? Okay. So for the student, this is a part of the uh, uh, chances for them to improve their intercultural awareness, to experience globalized problem-solving skill, and the diversity in the world perspective, uh, perspective and, uh, and the mobility. So to enhance the skill, so that they know how to use some, some tools to connect and making some uh, interactive, how to use a Google, uh, Google uh, Drive, uh, some apps like this one. So now they started to have a collaboration with uh, another part of the world. So authentic knowledge exchange and digital literacy skill. And a very funny thing is actually it's about this one, authentic knowledge exchange and the diversity in the world. So later I share you about the comment from my student. Not my student, it's actually from the UNICE student. We start to learn. Uh, our best master is actually come from Kansai University, where we learn from them how to do the collaborations. So after that, we are also uh, doing, try to do it by ourselves with the Binus University from, uh, Thai, uh, from Indonesia. So after that, we also try out with the uh, UTY University. So university, university, University Technology of Yogyakarta. Okay? So I'll give you one example. This is an example of the Global Classroom Coordination. First of all, we have a university professor. So she has a topic. Actually, her subject is called Corporate Governance. It's very, very, very important subject for each of the country, actually. So she has a topic called Initial Initiative of Corporate Governance in Malaysia. This is a topic. She finds some partner. A partner come from the governance body. So uh, the, it's a come from the Malaysia Institute of Corporate Governance. Okay? This one, they propose a topic called Pillar of Corporate Governance. So another level is actually she uh, find a prominent professor come from UTY. So they're talking about the Indonesia Corporate Governance Framework. Now the student in this subject, they come physically to the class. They will listen to three, okay, three parties to giving a lectures and doing some Q and A session and some collaborative work. Okay, I come from industry and come from the uh, another university. So, for example, I just give a very short. The class lasts for about one hour, two hours. I just take about one minute. Okay, this is a condition. We set up everything into the mode as a starting, just a topic level, set up for the professor. Okay, so for example, this one. For me, uh, in my opinion, I think one that 
to the marketing process. So, okay. so I will suggest that uh, if it's possible is the auditors. Okay, for this one, it's actually the student is being asked by the government body. What do you understand about the uh, ultimately responsible for the good and bad that happen in the company? So this is another one. It's actually come from the uh, UTY professor giving a well, lectures be, on her part, the structure of the corporate governance uh, in Indonesia, which normally in Malaysia we hard to get it. It can be only come from the Indonesia lecturer uh, that only know the about it. Company the, the Principles would come from agents' behavior. Okay, another sample over here is actually is using the uh, energy efficiency vehicle. It's my subject. In this one, we as a lecturer or in my own university, um, we are not afford to buy a brand new electric car to be dismantled by our student. Because of engineering or mechanical student, that most likely is actually using screwdriver and the grinder. They would like to dismantle car. But most of the time, they are unable to install back. Okay, so we quite worry to to buy a new car for them. Okay, so now what we do is actually we know this uh, manager. This manager is actually come from the Nissan. Okay, they, he is the responsible of PIC for the Nissan Leaf EV program in Malaysia. We invite him to give lecture to our student. And how much do you think I pay him? Yes, free. Because physically, he's not coming to my university and he's using his uh, uh, working time to do the presentation to us and he get the permission from the uh, management. So this one, let's say have a look. Okay. So for this one, I show you this picture is the Malaysia. And she's giving to a three group of students come from machine. different locations. It's called fast charging. You just plug in half an hour. You know about this car? 80% charge. You charge your charge the car from this port. So it's doing a live demo the, to tell the student each of the components of the car, important, the indicator, everything is informed to the student. The big one is the fast charging. They got the average voltage is 360 volt. So it's, if let's say for any leaking, you touch, you might be in danger. Okay, the car is start. You can see the meter. You can see this symbol. This one is our. This is our ready mode. This one is on. The car is ready to go. Yeah, this is some of the very important features for the electric car. If uh, we, as a normal user, we drive our normal car, if it's certainly we, we found something like this one, we are not aware, we could just step the pedal and then the car would just uh, ram someone, you know. So that's why he's trying to tell us all this information. Okay, this is another one that we try to do with the, the research update come from the, on the synthetic, I don't know how to spell this word, I'm so sorry. So it's actually, it's a collaboration between Oxford and UMP. We invited one of the uh, research uh, professor come from there to share about their research outcome. However, I cannot reveal the contents of the, the DNA things, but I can reveal a part of it is on the front part. So is it really bad in Malaysia? Yes. Dendrion. Oh, okay. Small one. Oh, okay. So this is huge one. So yeah, you see the dining hall like what Chin Mei has in her college. This is, this is where they filmed Harry Potter. But they took all the portraits down and put fake ones up. Which I think is a bit cheeky, because all these old people got left out of the film. For me, it's actually, I'm also learned from this session. Now I only knew that. I, I love uh, Harry Potter a lot, but I have no idea. Actually, it's actually it's a film at the Oxford. And then from here, my student getting very excited. Okay? And, and myself, it's actually it's inspired me to send my daughter if I got a chance, send my daughter to Oxford so that I have a chance to visit this place. Okay, so next. This is actually is a debate. We try to use the concept of debate between two nations, okay, with a Pakistan student and a Malaysian student. Okay, I just take one minute on it from here. Just have a look. Maybe by 
by not using GMO, why not we using PCR method to produce a lot of insulin? Uh, PCR method, polymerase chain reaction method. We have a very strong debate about some kind of a chemical things that men make to be to become a fertilizer. Okay, 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 uh, okay, okay. Uh, calm down, calm down, calm down. Okay, the hole is getting hot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, as you know, there is a bioreactor that use that use the PCR method, uh, fermentation method. I'm sorry, fermentation method to manipulate the insulin quality. The one telling the answer to this student is the lecturers, because the lecturers, the job of the lecturers in the global classroom, not to teach, is to mentor the pro learning process. So from here. From this debate, it's actually it's, uh, the losing part is from my own university, UMP. My student here is actually, they are the first year, second semester student. And the student from Pakistan is actually is a postgraduate student. They are very niche in the bio fertilizer thing. So that's why we lose from there. Okay, but we learn. This one is actually is about bio manufacturing. The professor from uh, Prof Tree from uh, UTY giving some lectures on the same thing about the DNA bio, biometric process to the student and then we're having some uh, Q&A session with, him, with her. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm Tan Yong Jie. Then, can I know that how long does, does it take in Indonesia to commercialize the therapeutic product from pre-clinical trial until the third phase of the clinical trial? Yeah, I think it depends whether the protein is the new therapeutic proteins or it's uh, biosimilar. Okay, so you, are, you thought that it's still continue, right? <laughs> okay, uh, seriously, I helped them to coordinate the process and I know nothing about what they're talking about. They're talking about all the things about the complex protein, DNA things. Okay, this is now one we try together with a uh, study with the uh, Hui Wen High School from Taiwan. So, from our side, we prepare some some uh, some tools, some gadgets for us. For the student from Taiwan, it's very, they are very cute. So, how they do the presentation is actually they are taking the uh, webcam from here to do the presentation. Some of them, they just draw using their their paper. And show it to the camera like this one. Some of them they're using their handphone because they need to introduce the the food, the food or some uh, some uh, candy or some very uh, drinks right to the Malaysian student. Get using English. So they, what they do is actually they are not so prepared. They instantly they're using their mobile to search the food, street food, right? Then they show the picture through like this one. <laughs> okay. So of course we enjoy the session. From this session, it's actually our student from Malaysia that are taking the class on Mandarin. So for information, they know nothing about Mandarin, although they are in the uh, university level. For a student from, uh, from Taiwan, they have been, they're taking the course in English. So for, okay, for that student, it's actually they are facing some pro trouble like, okay, I don't know how to speak with the, uh, like the professor over there. I can't speak with you because uh, I'm too shy. But if I talk to an Asian, in English, oh, I still can able to talk it, right? Same thing to my student. If they want to speak to a Chinese in Malaysia, the Chinese of Malaysia will a bit look down on them sometimes. But when they speak the same thing to the Taiwan student, because physically it's not there, I make mistake, I will not feel, I feel nothing, right? Uh, that's why they try. Okay, so guess what are they doing? The street grind, playing around handphone. They're doing a Mandarin class online interview assessment. Okay, so they have not. They are looking for a good signal, and then it's too noisy in the classroom, right? They go anywhere, 
Some even go to the toilet, find a corner, just to have a clear connections. Okay. Okay. Can you find the special spot in here? One is very special. Yes, she's a mother. Okay, when she's having a class, class time, she's uh, taking care of her baby, which physically this cannot be happen, right? Mm. Okay, and uh, we found uh, a new, new finding. We have another way of a group photo. Okay, virtually we meet uh, someone from the overseas. This one is actually is a professor come from the uh, Oxford. This come from Iran. That is the Pakistan. So we have a group photo together. We are not, we are not paying anything to them. Okay, this is uh, come from the student engagement when they joined this program. At the beginning, they are introduced themselves using Padlet. So at the end, also they're giving some feedback. Let's see. I think too much of them. You are lacking of time. Here. Maybe that time, I was not put full concentrate when she was teaching. Through this class, I felt that I'm very lucky. I can listen. Another lecturer share her knowledge with us. So this is a bit sarcastic. So because uh, I'm teaching my own student, I repeat the same thing again and again. They are from here in, from here out. Right? But if from another professor virtually telling the same thing with another different slang of the English, they are focused. Okay? This is some of the student perception. Is it same? I'm not sure. Okay, this is the current network that we built up. So we have uh, successfully in these three years to build up some network with them from the uh, Indonesia, Japan, uh, Oxford. So mostly it's uh, these regions of the country. We are looking for more. If from uh, Thailand, you, we would like to do some collaborative learning with us, please give me a name card and then I will contact you. We are eagerly looking for partners to try out any subject any professor, we try. I guarantee you, the session will be fun. And uh, the time for us to set up this thing, it can as fast as one week, as slow as two weeks. <laughs> because you don't need to do any development. Okay? So, instead of that, we also build a, a better learning space for the student. Because uh, if you want to do collaborative learning, you have to remove all these chairs and the tables. So that's why we're putting a some flexible location like this one. The first time when the student go into this learning space, they said, I feel like I'm going back to the preschool. Okay, colorful places. And then they're asking, because in engineering, their student is so rigid, they all the time go into the classroom, finding a place to sit, right? Now that when they go to the, this kind of a learning space, they ask the permission of the lecturers. Sir, can I sit on the floor? or most of them, they go to somewhere with a chair. Okay, then we have to ask them, please, go here, come here, sit on the floor. Then they start to change the way they have a behave in the class. Okay, I think that's all for me. Thank you very much.